Welcome to Stoke Meter, and today we have Justin Spaneth. Justin is the Chief Operating Officer and uh, Vice President of one of my favorite snack shops. It's uh, called Unique Pretzels. Actually, it's not called Unique Pretzels anymore. It's actually Unique Snacks, right? That's right. That's right. You got it. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Justin. It's always good to see you, man. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's it's fun every time I uh, every time I, I I talk with Justin I get a little bit amped because he has a great deal of enthusiasm and there's there's always a commitment to his company his culture over there and every employee that I've I've ever spoken uh, with they are just like Justin it's one of the funniest things that I've ever seen in the culture <laughs> there is just amazing so again thanks for being on the show yeah. man <laughs> oh my pleasure yeah my pleasure yeah if you can't have fun at work you know what what good is it I want you to look forward to coming to work not dreading it <laughs> <laughs> and it shows man it shows and everything that uh that goes down over there it's a well the funny thing is I was on the East Coast. I was up back there for a decade, and these cool pretzels came out. These little little shells, right? And and Gary, you for, I don't know if you see it because you're down there in Arizona. They, they they have distribution over there too. But I love these pretzels. But when I moved back west, really didn't see anything over here. And then lo and behold, Justin's company became a a, a, a client. I go no way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you that's how you guys met right was through your through your business yeah yep that's yeah, it right. that's it right. and so you you want to talk to about someone that evokes a stoke and justin's all about that so <laughs> oh heck yeah oh i got a funny story about when the shell started up so oh, do, you, do, do you have time oh heck yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right yeah so so we, you know, my brother and I, we, we inherited the splits line and eventually we said, Hey, we want to, we want to make something different. We want to make something that's so, you know, a little more, uh, geared towards kids and whatever. So we're, we're making, we had dyes made. It was a very purposeful make on what we wanted to try and create. And, you know, it took us a day to really dial a bunch of stuff in, which in, in the grand scheme of like R&D, a day is very short. But <laughs> uh, yeah, back in those days, you know, we're still a very small regional brand. My grandfather, he's, you know, stops in the in the break room, gets a cup of coffee and he's on the floor and he's, he was push, uh, pushing his early 80s. So he had a little bit of shake to him. You always knew where he was going from the break room to the front <laughs> office where he where he watched cameras you know that, that was his day he just spent time like going through the cameras and counting the customers in the retail store that happened or whatever but you always knew where he was because the shake of his coffee cup he would have little drips on the floor the whole way <laughs> <laughs> but this particular day he's he's standing by the extruder as my brother and i are watching what's happening and and, and trying to see what we want to make changes to and all that and he sees a non-pretzel shape coming through all we've ever made was the split shape you know standard pretzel twist shape and he sees these uh you know strips coming out you know little looks like um uh, yeah people can't see me so uh, yeah they look like uh you know strips of bubble gum almost you know long and flat and whatever and he's standing there and he goes what shit are you making now <laughs> uh, yeah so, <laughs> and he said bob, bob i don't know yet but we're working on something <laughs> 12 months later ever... is our number one skew. <laughs> yeah, what did he say after that? Do you have any uh, yeah. comments? Yeah, you know what? No, no. A uh, very Pennsylvania Dutch of him. He just stopped giving me a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> but no accolades or attaboy. No, no. <laughs> no. Stop riding my ass was the compliment. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> That's awesome. So... 
So I didn't know much about I didn't know much about your company. So I was, you know, kind of reading up on it. And this is a big family affair. This is a big this is a family company, right? Can, yeah. Give us kind of the history of of the evolution. Yeah, so we're six generations. Um, you know, the wow. second generation. Yeah, second generation incorporated us in 1921, but the first generation was the first Spanish that that we have documented that has started making pretzels. Even if it was a side gig, he was making he was making pretzels. So, um, and uh, you know, our ancestry goes way back. The first ancestor to come from Germany actually immigrated from Germany in 1776. Oh no so, way! Not, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, how cool is that? Yeah. Jeez, uh, I mean, what's more American than that, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you go on our website, you know, on the Unique Snacks website, um, you'll see our history page. And it's it, it might be just a hair, you know, not quite true <laughs> okay so I, I i have to cut you off so yeah. i did go to your web page and i did look at your history thing and i got sucked in you guys totally full it took me a while before i'm like okay wait a minute there's a little bit of uh reality versus <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh totally you know we Dude, totally our old ones <laughs> oh, hook line and sinker man i was like <laughs> wait 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 <laughs> yeah our old website, you know, is three paragraphs telling about, you know, trying to sum up six generations of family history in three paragraphs. And, you know, yeah. I, I could never finish the fourth paragraph because I fell asleep. Really? I was like, nobody cares. Nobody <laughs> actually cares. Yeah. So, you know, you put you put a, a, a fun version of the truth on the website. And, you know, yeah. Did we come over in 1776? Yes. Did the guy row a, a, a rowboat, one armed with an oven on the back of it? No, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. <laughs> well, I tell you, our listeners, go go look at that. And, and what's the what's the website like? How would they find it? Yeah, uniquesnacks.com. Yeah. yeah, go go check it out. It's actually it's from a website's <laughs> per perspective, it's really coolly how it's or it's really cool how it's laid out, but the content is hilarious like it is yeah. it's really fun you need to go check it out <laughs> yeah it's it's funny you know our our brand is almost one image but our culture is another and oh, you know yeah. we got to find this way to to mesh the two um you know you you, you think a hundred year old family business that's been making you know a, a, a high-end snack for all these years is is you know something that's taken very seriously it's a very yeah. you know it's sure. just a serious brand and but that's not our culture in, in our walls you know we want to have fun we want to take ourselves much lighter than that and you know it's a, it's a fine line who our consumer base is to, to who we are and you know but we like to have fun with it even if it doesn't match all the time <laughs> <laughs> well I love it because it is a hundred year old company I didn't realize that until I and I until I started reading and they were goes we met a hundred years man so cool and i'm just yeah. wondering because you have i mean your grandpa from the the shaky coffee and all that other good stuff all the way down <laughs> to, to, to to you how, how was it how was it founded and then i'm wondering if you could tell us what were some of the ups and downs because you guys went through the great depression you went through the world wars you went through all that good stuff there um and then what do you think constitutes and when we'll get into this a little bit later but what constitutes a culture that you have over there. So, and, and if there's anything that uh, you miss on that, I'll, I'll be sure to repeat. <laughs> wow. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Chapter one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, our family was really bad at documenting uh, those historical moments. You know, I mean, we have some, you know, ledgers of our books, you know, when they're when they're handwriting ingredients down and what they paid. And it was, you know, you know, three cents for 50 pounds of flour, oh, and, nice. you know, you know, things <laughs> along those lines. I mean, it's just crazy. But, you know, they, it wasn't really documented. And a lot of times through that first, second, third generation, they had they had other jobs, um, you know, 
they started a company. They were making pretzels. They had other jobs. They're making soft pretzels. They're selling them on street corners, you know, the old, old time vendor, you know, type of stuff, just trying to make extra income to make a living for their household. It was, you know, far from what we consider a business today, you know, it, it, it's so, um, you know, the fourth generation, my grandfather, um, somewhere between third and fourth generation, they stopped making soft pretzels and started only making hard pretzels. There was a blend in there in between. Um, but it was only the fourth generation that we started really pushing hard pretzels. And then we got into the salty snack category instead of this, you know, side hustle type of gig. Um, you know, so we started selling those hard pretzels. My grandfather, he, uh, in the fifties, he made a mistake. I don't know if he was busy. Uh, I'd like to say he was busy. He <laughs> might have been sleeping. I don't know. But, <laughs> but either way, he he yeah. overproofed he overproofed the the pretzels that he made. And when he made them, they split open. So huh. being you know, and and in the general sense of a quality pretzel. It was always they need to be smooth and they need to be shiny and they, you know, they need this perfect look and they weren't that. Um, but being Pennsylvania Dutch, being a little cheap, he <laughs> sold them anyway. You know, yeah. Did they fall on the floor? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, they were cheap. So they, he sold them anyway. And, you know, when he went around to his customers, sold them, they didn't know anything different until they ate them and, Next time he goes around, he goes to take the orders, and uh, they they said, "What did you do to that last batch?" Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just I try to imagine. Was he like shaking in his boots, like, "Oh crap, I sold him this junk." <laughs> oh, they're you know, but they they like them better, and so so then I think the emotional roller coaster that happens, like, uh, was he was he uh, offended? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you mean you like them better? <laughs> I sold you trash and you like them better than what I was selling you. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Or, or was it a compliment? I don't know. But uh, needs to say he had to figure out how to do what he did again. Um, and everything was hand, handmade at that time using a rotary hearth oven. You know, it's a, it's a like a big round oven and there's stones, um, you know, that they're, that they cook and they use like one of those pizza peels on it. And, you know, they're just real old school, uh, which is awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, from that point, you know, that pretzel, it was actually coined as mistakes in the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> My 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 little my little jab to my dad's generation. I always go. It was like they were called mistakes until all three of the kids answered every time they said the word mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, we better call these something different because all the kids yeah. are answering. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that well, you know what's cool though is. One of your biggest sellers, I mean, that's what I know you folks are from is the splits, right? It's amazing how it started as a mistake. And I think yeah. we're all so, we all get into this perfection mode, OCD mode, right? And it's just one of those things that let it happen. Let it happen. Yeah. That, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, some of the best things ever happened by mistake. You know, I mean, Guinness was a mistake. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they over roasted the malt, whatever. Yeah, or the the, the, the grain. <laughs> you know, I made a really cool black beer. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, oh, where did I leave off? Um, yeah. So anyway, my dad's generation really was instrumental in um, trying to figure out how to mass produce that pretzel that mistake pretzel which eventually got coined splits because yeah. uh, they split open on the surface like a like a split top bread kind of thing yeah. you know, they burst open you get these crevices and bubbles and all that and it adds all this extra flavor and texture um but uh you know so my dad was as it started taking off they grew in this oversized garage and they bought one of the very first uh, unix single extruders you know 
pushing out one pretzel at a time, putting it onto a stop and go conveyor. And then, you know, I, I mean, just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, and then uh, eventually the sales got to the point where we bought this new building that we were in and moved in in 1980. And they put this new, uh, this oven in, they bought used, but it was 10 pretzels wide. Um, and, you know, I mean, that's 10 times capacity, but in the baking world, <laughs> uh, you know, not, but, but in the baking world, you change environments. You know, when you change environment, you know, so much is in the temperature, the humidity, the everything. So you're, so our splits, hands down, hands down, are the hardest pretzel in the world to make oh, consistently. Wow. Um, there is almost any other pretzel I could make with my hands tied behind my back and my eyes closed. No doubt. We don't make them because they already exist. And then I was blessed with unique pretzels so everything i do has to be different thank you grandpa <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah i get picked on from my uh my business operations manager we did this 100th anniversary video and and the guy you know is sort of a candid interview and he's like you know asking me why why are you unique and i was like i have no idea and and as he's asking me this i didn't know he was going to ask me and and i was like what a neat challenge <laughs> and, and my yeah. business guy he, he rides me all the time for that he's like what a neat challenge i know your real thoughts <laughs> yeah <laughs> he goes but you're a good bullshitter that's for sure <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so i have a question for you so this is a family business and i know that that you going that far back in history i mean it's kind of in your dna but even with, even with that, there's got to be some unique challenge in being a family business. I know that, you know, kind of the people that I know that have been successful in business, the ones that are family, family owned and operated, that type of thing, it brings a whole different level of difficulty to the table. But what, how, do you, how do you attribute your success as a family owned business, your longevity, you know, how do you deal with that? And, and what challenges have, have you ran into and how did you deal with those? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, and yeah, so my, our fourth generation was, was my grandfather and grandmother and, and they got divorced. So the company went 50, 50, which is like, the ultimate nightmare of every, of every family business. Sure, typically, sure. Yeah. It was typically the death, the death swat. Um, we were so fortunate to have a quality product that it didn't matter how badly mismanaged we were. The customers <laughs> kept buying the product. Uh, so how did we survive? Good product. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So imagine how good we can do being run well and good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so my dad had two sisters. Um, it was just, it was a mess. It really was a mess. Um, and so the succession planning is something I take very, very seriously. Uh, you know, and, and it's the only way you're going to survive. Um, you know, I do a lot of, groups forums i lead i lead uh talks with different family business groups um and and a lot of times i say you know if you're not putting as much effort into the succession plan as you are into the business plan it's not going to work yeah. but a lot of times people only put the effort into the business side and say the rest will work itself out until something yeah, well, bad happens yeah. and then you work nothing out and now you have Christmas and Thanksgiving, all to talk about all the blessed things you got going on at work. Uh, <laughs> and you dialed nothing yeah. in. There's nothing legal written down. Um, and it's, it's a mess. And it typically is the kibosh to a business. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awful to see, but yeah. So I was very fortunate to get to see everything that could go wrong. Down to, I was fired at one point. My grandmother fired me. 
Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My grandmother fired me. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this story. You know, going I on captured and on that on. for this, the title, man. Fired by my grandma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, How did so, that yeah, feel? I, <laughs> oh, oh, that one stung a bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, that... say I don't get offended easily, but that one stung. <laughs> Just the hair. <laughs> Well, I mean, the the, the uh, part of me wants to know is uh, what does it take for someone to do to get fired by their grandma? But I don't want to get on. <laughs> Yo, let's leave that part out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> let's save you some editing. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so it sounds like part of your success has been the culture that you guys have developed and i can tell again even from your website down to even just talking with you right now that there's a a solid culture that is part of your guys success how do you develop that and what is that culture like what do you try and foster <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you know you know it, it's it's interesting you know I was just reading something that said, you know, there was this, there was this established entrepreneur. And then they said, um, you know, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are. It doesn't matter how good you are at something. Uh, what really makes a, a corporation work is emotional intelligence. Um, so, I mean, you could have your doctorate and not know how to do anything other than what you, that skill set is. So if you don't know how to talk to people, you don't know how to work with people, you don't know how to make them better at what they do, you're only going to get so big. Um, so, I mean, it's really down to the emotional intelligence and understanding how to talk to a hundred different personalities, how to make them feel welcome, how to make them feel useful. Um, I don't even have to be that good at my job. Yeah. I just have to hire people yep. that are good at their job sure. and make them want to be there. Yep. Yep. And, and they bring all the talent to the table. Yep. My talents are just extra. If I have any, I don't even know if I have any. My <laughs> well, I, will, I will say this. I mean, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with you folks for, for a little bit there. And it's amazing to see, because you remember my background wasn't in the stuff that I originally went to business for with you folks. It was, it was my background was in the human resources in the organizational development, executive development uh, realm. And one thing I see over and over uh, talking with Norm from Cheers and Jake and, and they, <laughs> they, they, yeah. Yeah. hopefully Norm's watching this thing. It goes right back at you, Norm. But uh, yeah. it's amazing to see that even because it falls in succession, you and then uh, Norm and then to, to Jake. And it's amazing to see that every one of them has complete ownership of the things that they're doing with the complete confidence of the individual that's above them. And that's actually very rare to find. And they speak with confidence. It's never with any trepidation that I've ever seen. And, and again, that's something that is very rare in a company. Some people attribute it to, oh, no, it's a smaller company. They've still been around 100 years, man. <laughs> they've still been around 100 years. And they've gone through the ups yeah. and downs. And every worker that I've ever spoken with on, on phone conferences or other um, and even even the people that work with you, they say the same daggum thing, man. Same daggum thing. So there is some awesome. uh, Spanish magic in it. I'm not going to that Spanish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The sales team that you talk to, I mean, they're great. They really do a nice job. Uh, and this is assuming they're still listening. So I have to, you know, <laughs> no, <I'll> get it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so no they do a great job uh, you know and you know when I brought Norm on he had zero sales experience you know what you, you know what he did he was an air force linguist I love it what, what does that have to do with selling pretzels <laughs> he knew nothing about the grocery industry he knew nothing about salty snacks he knew nothing about selling he knew nothing about distribution but you know what he knew how to lead people 
Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 He had he had give a shit and he knew how to lead people. <laughs> and I will take that and I'll teach you everything else you need to know. I love uh, it. I uh, absolutely uh, love that. <laughs> yep. see, yeah, it seems like uh, I looked at the companies that, that have, you know, the, the real successful companies versus those that kind of struggle. And it's also in almost in any industry is you kind of the ones that seem to struggle are the people that are almost threatened by their workers and their skills. And yeah. they kind of like lead by dragging people along behind them. You know what I mean? Versus kind of what you're talking about where, you know, I'm here for you. My goal is to get, is to recognize talent and, and make people better as opposed to I'm, I'm in the lead and you follow me and where I'm, I'm going to drag you to success. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, it's, your, your, your method is where you see the successful companies and you see the happy employees too, almost right. time and time again. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, some if you hire the right person, they're going to beat themselves up for being wrong and being late oh, all yeah, on their sure. own. They yeah. don't need someone to tell them you messed up. It, and if they need that, then you probably got the wrong guy or you've taken them down this dark you know, tunnel in which they don't care about what they're doing anymore. But, you know, you allow them to care about what they're doing. You, you allow them to do their job and don't micromanage them. They, they, they just, they care. Yeah. And, you know, if, and then if you have to force them to care from that point, yeah, then, you know, there's always those bad eggs. There's always the people that don't care. Then, then go back to HR and go, why the hell did we hire them in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> that was your job to pick this out. <laughs> well, what, and what's interesting is a lot of those people will tend to wash themselves out anyway. I, oh, you know course. what I mean? You, you kind of yeah. just keep raising the bar and they end up like, well, this isn't a good fit for me anyway. It just seems like that kind of, that's how it works as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'd like to say I've, I've never fired anyone. Oh, they sorry. fired themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't fire you. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's awesome. uh, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I got to ask, yeah. man, what, what's, when you see where, where uh, a lot of the industry is going, what's next for, for Unique? And it, I, I'm not trying to do any prognostication and anything like that. I mean, you could you could do all the regular things and you'll be just fine. But it, every time I'm talking with you, there's always something going on. Is there anything percolating that that's getting everyone excited that can be shared, or is it all top secret? Yeah. So, oh man. So we came into 2020. You know that obviously 2020 was what 2020 was um, <laughs> yeah, a royal mess yeah. uh so yeah we were so february of 2020 was our 100th anniversary yeah and with that i wanted to do our rebrand so we went from unique pretzels to unique snacks that was an entire logo change which I'll tell you what, you don't know how many things your logo touches until oh. you change it. Yes. <laughs> uh, if somebody told me everything that we had to change and the cost associated with it before I did it, I might have chickened out. <laughs> like, really? It's there too? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so it was like November of 2019, we got the ball rolling, you know, starting to do the packaging design changes, starting to do everything, starting to design up, um, you know, anniversary stuff, uh, you know, get ready for our anniversary. You know, we were trying to do some other cool stuff that just never panned out um, just because everybody got busy. Uh, we were trying to do a special anniversary brew and work with uh, with a large uh a large microbrew. Yeah, you figure that part out. <laughs> you figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> That's not my problem anymore. It came out. <laughs> so, um, but we were trying to do like a special, unique snacks, anniversary, 100th anniversary brew, and, you know, trying to celebrate big time. Um, but, uh, you know, so we got into 2020 and we were too far down a rabbit hole to stop. You know, our, we had films that 
you know, it was either you're ordering the old stuff or you're ordering the new stuff. Well, no sense in ordering the old stuff at this point. Uh, you know, we've already gone. So let's just keep going. And man, I'll tell you what, that was a lot of work. And I oh, yeah. promise, I promise I will never rebrand again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I saw from your uh, just reading about your company and stuff. Even with even in 2020, with everything that was going on, the middle of a major rebrand. Again, you were able to pivot and kind of attack the market on what would work. And I saw you you did a lot where you kind of transitioned more to online sales and mm -hmm. distribution and that type of stuff. What are some of the the purpose, purposeful things you guys did? you know, to, to get through 2020. Um, yeah, so it, it was employees first, 100% employees first. The rest was noise, do what you had to do, um, stay safe, protect, protect everything. You know, that, that's our asset. We can't do anything without them, um, their families and everything else. So that was number one. Um, and we were deemed essential the entire time. So nice. very, very thankful. Um, so we were allowed to come to work every day. Didn't mean they had to. Did not mm -hmm. mean those employees had to. So we had to show appreciation. And then, you, you know, being in the, the network of people that I'm in and the, and the region that we're in, there was a lot of good uh, friends that I have that were not doing as well. Um, you know, they had to shut down or they saw their market just go away. So when we knew that we were okay, um, being very stressful, don't get me wrong, yeah. but we knew our business was okay. We, um, we bought thank you packages from the businesses that were hurting and gave them to our employees. Um, you know, awesome. so one, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, one of my good friends is uh, one of the largest duck farmers in, in the country, you know, makes, you know, it's like, like the Purdue of ducks. Um, granted, wow. duck doesn't sell as well as chicken, but, you know, so they do a ton of business and they're right in our backyard and they were the first to feel everything mm -hmm. because all Asian markets shut down first mm -hmm. in the country before, oh. before anything shut down, Asian markets shut down. They were at a point, their worst week, they're at five percent of their annual, their typical sales. Oh my gosh! That's so, um, you know, they were the first one, as I said. Look, I need kits. Give me whatever you got. We're going to give them to the employees. We're going to make some noise. We're going to do press releases, and that you know, sure, are we on the press release, but. I did it for them. I wanted people to know that they can go save this local company. They can go buy some stuff from them. They can in any way possible help that friend of mine, as well as in turn, it's showing appreciation to the employees. And then we did the same thing with paper goods, uh, you know, so a restaurant supply store, um, they, you know, they had paper towels, they had gloves, they had all of this stuff, but it wasn't in retail packs. All the customers are going to, to you know, Walmart, Giant, yeah. you know, so they're going to grocery stores. Well, they're like, well, I don't have a six pack, but I got a case of a hundred over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, well, I was like, box them up into kits, send them my way, and we'll give those to the employees. And, you know, so we did that. Um, we did restaurant gift cards to all the local independent restaurants in our area, gave those to employees. You know, so uh, yeah, I hate to linger on it, but that was absolutely first, first, first. Um, and then secondarily, uh, Amazon was a natural pickup because everybody just started shopping online. Uh, we actually ended up hiring employees for fulfillment. Um, and then we also hired additional employees for our plant. Um, a lot of them were people that were laid off, but wanted to work. Mm -hmm. They were like, I don't want the I, too prideful to take the unemployment. The I've mm -hmm. never been on unemployment in my life. I don't want unemployment. We hired those people, um, because one, it gave them that, that feeling of being able to help someone, um, Two, it allowed our employees when they didn't feel well, they could 
call off. So please don't, if you don't feel well, don't come in. This is not the time for you to be a hero. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you being a hero is staying home. So, uh, so we had, we hired probably 15 extra employees just to help, you know, an extra body or two on each shift and extra people on fulfillment. And so, uh, so that was really good. And, and the, the purpose of hiring people that had other jobs, they just were currently out because they weren't deemed uh, uh, essential was our employees had zero fear of losing their job. You know, they can call off all point systems were erased. You know, there was no penalties to taking off. You got coverage. I mean, that, and that was, that was, I mean, that many employees, you know, that was a couple hundred thousand dollar investment to yeah. do that. Right. Um, so that was, so that was really, really good. Um, and then we started, uh, we did a, a new program through our website called giving with a twist. So we, basically said, we're going to run a program a specific to a charity, give them a code, they can blast it however they want. 10% of all proceeds go to the charity. And we'll even give the customer 5% off to try and drive them to want to use the code, even if they didn't know who the charity was, they still say 5% if they use this code. Mm-hmm. So you now it was so 10% of all those sales went to each of those charities, because charities were they were struggling. I mean, you, you don't, you don't think so, but you know, if everyone's hurting and doesn't, so they got tight on their money. Um, so charities were hurting. So, so that was something that we did. And that's actually a program we're going to, that we're keeping around. Um, so we thought that was such a, a neat add to what we do. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we're focused on our website. We're focused right now. We're pivoting to uh, change what we ship, how we ship, how we market it, you know, trying to get out of our old generation of how we do some things there. Um, the point of the rebranding was so we can stop being just a pretzel brand. We want to make some other snacks. And uh, our business model right now is we make all of our own product and we don't make product for anyone else. If that doesn't get any more unique in our industry, <laughs> uh, we're the only ones. I'll let you know that. Uh, <laughs> why? Because it's a terrible business model. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I gotta, I gotta say. So when when I asked that question, I fully expected. You know, we did this with Amazon. We increased our. But I gotta say, that is awesome. What it you is. just said to me is yep. absolutely incredible because you didn't go to the, the business strategies. You went straight to the people. people. You went straight yeah. to your employees. And not only that, it wasn't just your employees. It was the oh, companies those. and the people yeah. that were in your, in your community. I, got, I mean, that is so awesome. I just want to tell you, kudos to you guys oh, for, no for having Thank that you. perspective because, yeah. you know, it really is the people. The people are your greatest assets. Um, I saw, I can't remember who the quote is. And I've seen this happen so many times. It says basically, you know, the gist of it is, is that people are your greatest asset until a company makes a change or something happens. And then they're, then they're your liability. Yeah. And this was some, some corporate something or another that I was reading about. And unfortunately, I saw a side of things in some industries that I'm involved in, like with healthcare and stuff like that, where that absolutely was not the case. It was business as usual. You were going to perform no matter what, you know what I mean? So it kind of hits close to home for me, what you guys, what you just said. Yeah. And I just got to say, I am so impressed with what, what you guys did. And just another thing though, too, is uh, there was a question that I, I was going to ask too, is what's, what's for the next hundred years, how are you going to make it happen? You, I, you just answered it. <laughs> that's, exactly, yeah. that's exactly how you do it. With, yeah, with seriously. The side of it. Because it, it, if you look at all the long standing companies, uh, Herman Miller is one of them. Um, and all these, uh, these other ones that put those people, first, that they're always writing a book about or something like this. It really does go right back to that. You're talking about emotional intelligence, the emotional quotient and such. 
it's obvious that it goes beyond just the emotional intelligence aspect of it. Um, a person can be completely emotionally intelligent with, with, uh, with bad intent, <laughs> if you will. Everything that you did is you tie it in with a good intent for the people. And what I'm finding is that even though this interview uh, started with what was going on with Unique and the business and, and the fun and such, it's obvious that the reason that it's such a strong culture is because of the people and the reason that you're, you folks are going to continue to progress and continue to tackle the different problems is the trust in those people too. So I can't, I can't thank you enough for, for those wonderful examples. Unbelievable. Because I, I think both Gary and I were just thinking, I, it's funny because you'll start to see us get that little twitchy grin and that, 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 that's what was happening, man. Just when you were talking about the people like that and expanding it to all around you, all of a sudden you create the tribe that is going to be around you whenever you go through stuff too. So fantastic, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always say people, people can be whoever they want to be in good times. It's how you react in times of panic. Yes. That, that you see instinct happen you know so you know you want that instinct to be the right thing and then and then they, and then you know it's genuine yeah um, exactly oh my goodness well i don't even know how to top that justin uh, i th i think that's where we, we end today <laughs> because I'm, I'm in this i'm i'm in this uh leadership euphoria of justin spanish <laughs> 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 oh, too funny <laughs> no thank you yeah it's it you know it's it's funny it's just do what you got to do in the moment and you know you didn't even think about it you know so it's yeah but yeah super cool to you know coming out of the backside of this the pandemic you know you go that was pretty cool. You know, we did a lot of good stuff. Um, you know, I wasn't alone in that. You know, that, that wasn't. I'm, I'm not on Justin Island over here. I mean, that was that was a team. Every everybody sure. chipped in. You know, but yeah, but it's the culture. You know, it says yes, do that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that, that needs to happen. Awesome. So, but All yeah, it, it was keep really cool. It up, man. Keep up that awesomeness, man. That. Yeah. Uh, you need to you need to make your own personal stoke meter in there and see where's your stoke at. Because <laughs> 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 it's it's awesome. It's high. It's high. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you for your time. And uh, My pleasure. I, I would love to actually get you on another show where we talk with some other people that have gone on, like the Mac Brothers or 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 something like that. What do you think, Gary? Sure. That'd oh, absolutely. Great. Absolutely. That'd be cool. Some other <laughs> founders, some other people. companies. Yeah. 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 Sounds good, man. Yeah. This is great. I love doing this stuff. It's so much fun. So, so yeah. Yeah. Ask me anytime, you know, give me a day's notice or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or give, give me two dates to choose from. I'll, I'll try and figure one out. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll get her done. Cool. We'll get it done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks, Justin. Hey, thanks, yeah. man. No problem. Thank, Thank you, guys. Out. See ya. All right. Bye.